stage five of the Torino Adriatico, bright yet cold. The action, however, extremely hot on a short 155 kilometer run to Fermo. Well, it was characterized by some hellish climbs, many of which not categorized, and not least the first of the day, which drew out an amazing response with many riders battling for a place in any prospective breakaway. A downhillish run to the foot of a non-categorized test that really saw several incarnations of great breakaways. And in the end, we finally had 12 up the road by a handsome margin. Maximum gap was over four minutes and they were being pegged back by a committed UAE Team Emirates team. Well, Emirates started to lose the will to do all of the driving. Uh, the main problem was that in the breakaway was Benjamin Thomas of Kofidis. Starting the day a minute and eight in arrears of Tadej Pogacar overall, and potentially the man that was gonna deny the breakaway their fun. Well, as the King of the Mountains points started to get handed out, Francesco Gavazzi uh, took some for Elo Cometa, and we were heading for yet more climbing, even with the intermediate sprint. But really, the distillation of the day was a series of tests on a circuit that would take us up to Fermo. Some of the ramps were absolutely punishing, up to 21%. And the man who was equal to it from the breakaway, Warren Bargui. Clement Rousseau, his teammate, had done so much work that Bargui offered up some of the champagne at the end of the day, and by that, you can probably realize that Bargui had the metal to finish the job. Five years around since his last big win, and this was going to be a huge one. As the breakaway fell away, Benjamin Thomas regrouped with the man up front. There were others that still remained hopeful, such as Sandra Maurice, Nelson Oliveira, who were also a part of that original breakaway. But really, it was down, surely, to what Warren Bargui could do. They were leaning on him. Would he take a stand? Well, he was timing it absolutely brilliantly. Meanwhile, timing was the thing in the chase. Remco Evenepoel decided that now was the time to go. Had UE Team Emirates used up too many of their battlers protecting Tali Pogaccia? Well, Pogaccia in the blue jersey following straight on to the white jersey that he's loaning to Evenepoel at the moment. And they were taking some great corners out there. Unfortunately, one of them was missed. Vingago was also in the mix there. Gianluca Brambilla, who dropped back out of the breakaway, suddenly found himself in a happier place. Well, it wasn't a happy place at all for Remco Evenepoel. Of the three that missed the turn, he was the worst off. Turning quickly was Pogaccia, he getting back in. But the struggle for Evenepoel, what could have been a great day for him, taking an advance perhaps on Tali Pogaccia, but Pogaccia looked strong. Of those up front, Warren Bargui was absolutely the strongest and there was no chasing him down when he set off finally on the last series of climbs. He determined to hit the cobbles first and that's precisely what he did. And as the road picked up, so did his pace. He was absolutely majestic. The gap back to the blue jersey, 51 seconds. It wasn't going to be the day of Benjamin Thomas but another Frenchman, Warren Bargui, would bring it home. Well, he doesn't win often, but when he does win, he wins big. Grand Tour stages, Tour de France, Welter have gone his way. And this will be a huge fillip to a man who is not done yet at the age of 30. Taking the final bend, this must have been extra sweet because of the distance between his last victory and this one. Magnificent performance and proving that unpredictability can creep into the day. It's not all about Tadej Pogacar, though he still leads this race. Sandra Maurice coming home in second place ahead of Simone Velasco of Astana. And the roster of riders who came to congratulate Warren Bargui was long. Pogacar coming home, same time as Remco Evenepoel and Jonas Vingago. Bodes well for a good battle in the mountains. Today's battler, though, Warren Bargui. Margin of victory, 10 seconds over Maurice and Velasco. Coming home behind Oliveira, Port, Pogaccia, Vingago, Mass, Evanapol, and Jai Hindley. The smiles of Vargi. We were used to seeing it some years ago. Well, it's back. Could it be the start of something special? We shall wait and see.
Pogacar leads Evanapol by nine seconds. Aronsman on 43. Vingago 45. Lopez rounding out the top five. A minute adrift, same time as Richie Port, who was lively today. So what of stage six? An earlier start for everybody and two mighty tests at the end of a 216 kilometre run in total to Carpeña. A nasty stage certainly and those two big peaks at the very end with the downhill run uh, kicking up towards the line but no mountain top finish essentially tomorrow but two big peaks to take on. Surely Bogacha is the favourite. We shall see.